What's up guys? Welcome back to another barber tutorial video. So right here, we are gonna be going down to a number two on the side. My client did request a number two on the side. So as you can see, just trying to take out all this bulk that is sitting on my client's head, trying to go over it a couple of times, just so I'm solidifying myself that everything is evenly cut, everything is equally a two on the side all around my client's head. So depending on my client's facial structure, um, it is up to you to determine how high you wanna go as far as knocking down the bulk on the side. So if your client wants a one on the side or a number two on the side, again, looking at your client's facial structure to determine that. For me on this cut, I did go to my client's temples. I did feel like my client did have a, a longer uh, facial structure, so I was able to go that high. But again, not every um, facial structure is the same. So you always want to just determine that during the consultation part of your um, your cut. Final Cut Pro, like, every, all my friends have been telling me that, like, you need to do a lot more stuff with this. So beginning yeah. to square yeah. off my things, client's sideburns, again, I already the knocked off all the bulk down to a number two the, on the side. Really? Yeah. So determining how high I go, I try to just go to the natural the, side. The so I go pop. as natural as possible. Okay. Just so, so my client's sideburns will pop at the same time. But again, giving just, my client longevity, like, not trying to take it really in. Like past that like natural that. line. So basically, like you don't get enough views or something. Yeah. Like? So again, right here we are going to okay. be using my so trimmers like to knock down yeah. um, I mean, this hair that's behind my client's the, ear. I'm using the very like corner the of the trimmer. As you can see, I'm taking my time yeah. trying to get my client longevity going down, like down like natural slightly. neckline. Yeah, yeah. Client did have straight hair, so I did have to go over the line a couple of times just to ensure that it would pop and yeah. I'm making sure that all the little hairs, the little fuzzy hairs like, behind my client's ear are taken out. That's why I'm taking so long too, like the so when I set in this natural edge up behind my client's ear, I'm not like trying to take off the bulk all at once. I fold over my clipper, I'm sorry, my trimmer and I remove that bulk. So if anyone who owns these clippers, you know how sharp these things can get. And again, for the most part, these do leave a mark if you're not careful and you aren't soft with your touch. So again, I try to remove all that bulk, um, not the same way that I set in that line. But then we're gonna take a trip out to I always carry a brush and try to brush down my client's head just so I'm ensuring myself that I did remove all that loose hair that I already cut. That way I'm not confusing myself um, from leaving any hair behind. But we're gonna come back to that at the end as we detail. So as you can see right here, starting to square off my client's sideburns, trying to give them that natural look, but also make it pop at the same time. And again, utilizing my trimmer, knocking down my client's C cup, and beginning to just start creating that edge up behind my client's ear. So as you can see right now, when I set in this edge up behind my client's ear, I'm not trying to remove all that bulk. I'm just trying to set it in. And then to remove that bulk, I'm gonna be turning my clipper, I'm sorry, my trimmer over to completely remove that bulk. So right here, I'm just trying to be on the safe side. Again, anyone who knows these, these trimmers, they are really, really sharp when they are zero gap. So again, always trying to be on the safe side, just so you're not giving your client those red marks when he leaves and you know the taper pops more than the red mark so it's always important to just be careful when you are setting in this natural line so right here i am beginning the clipper over comb process i'm not holding the clipper like a pencil i'm kind of just free handing it and using my comb as a protector so in a sense this is clipper over comb but I am kind of just free handing it and going straight up. All right, and using this pencil technique, holding it as a pencil, as a clip over comb, I start high and then I start in the middle and then I finish at the bottom. So again, starting high, starting in the middle and then starting at the bottom. So consistently starting this a process of removing that line not setting in any guideline but just trying to soften it 
just so we create that blur on my client's uh, number two on the side. So again, it's very important when you're trying to remove that bulk on the side in the very first step to scoop out just so that this process clipper over comb and freehanding it over comb can become a lot easier to remove and you're saving more time. You're working less, saving more time and it becomes a lot easier. To me, you're giving your client that square silhouette that when he looks in the mirror, he sees that his side of his head and the, the way it was cut, there's no dents in it. So again, starting to clip over comb, just trying to detail, not set in any guideline, but just trying to soften this line already. As a beginner, I didn't always use the clipper over comb method, but over time, I realized that it saved me a ton of time. And for any beginner, if you're not comfortable with using the clipper over comb, go ahead and throw on that one guard or even the half guard, just so that you're getting that practice down. Again, you're gonna save a lot of time and you're gonna save a lot of money too as well. Um, you're not gonna be buying all these extra guards that you really don't need. But as long as you perfect this clipper over comb method, you are going to be able to save um, a lot of time. All right, so beginning that taper process, I am setting in the guideline with my clipper. I'm not setting it in with my trimmer just so that I can be ensure that I'm going to be able to remove this line. So again, using my clipper to set in the guideline, I do have it all the way closed. And then coming under it with my trimmer, as you see, I'm not going all the way up to that first line that I created with my clipper, but I'm kind of just going under it. As I go right above that line, I'm kind of soft touching it. So I'm not planting in it. I'm kind of just soft touching it as I scoop up. So gonna come under it again, uh, under that process with my shaver. Same, same thing that I did with my trimmer. I'm not gonna be going all the way up, but I'm gonna be really light as I go uh, to that line that I removed with my clipper. So for this next step, I am going to be setting in my guideline with the half guard all the way closed. So again, the half guard all the way closed. I'm going up about one inch. And as I go up, I'm not pressing in like this guideline. I'm not trying to force this guideline in. I'm scooping and I'm becoming um, more soft as I go up to that line. That two that we um, set in on the side with the first step. All right, so for this next step, I am gonna be using the close to open method. So since we already set in the guideline with the clipper all the way closed, it is gonna be really easy, just like butter, to take out this first line. And as I'm using this close to open method, I'm just kind of opening the lever as I'm watching that line shift up. So you're not setting in a guideline, you're just trying to detail this line out. You're trying to fade it out, trying to scoop it out, trying to watch it shift up. And again, the more hair, you're gonna cut with the lever uh, closed. So again, you wanna open up that lever as you're going up. And again, right here, just trying to bring out my trimmer, just trying to detail that very bottom line. You always want to try to detail as much as possible when you're at the very first step. So that way when you set in that next guideline, it becomes a lot easier to just focus on that guideline. This next guideline, I am setting it in with the one guard all the way open. As I go higher into that two that we set in in the very beginning, I'm using my one and a half guard just so that I can remove that, that top line. So I'm already starting to just blend it in with my next guideline that I set in right now. So again, just going over it multiple times and then I'm going to be kind of beginning that close to open method but I'm not going to remove this next guideline I'm just trying to soften it that way when I come under it with the half guard all the way closed I'm going to be just going to be able to attack that line so as you can see right here going to just attack that bottom line and again opening my lever as I watch that line shift up so right here again trying to just fade out this line that we set in with the one guard all the way open. Using my corner method, I am already just utilizing what I have on. Just trying to use as much as possible. So when I say utilize, I just try to 
try to picture it as I'm just trying to use as much as I have with this guard. That way, I'm not just trying to rotate back and forth with multiple guards. But again, just using it as much as possible, trying to do as much damage as I could, trying to disperse those dark spots. So as you can see, did throw on the one guard all the way open, just trying to soften that line. So that way, when I come under it with the next guard, it is going to be able to take it out completely. So I threw on my 1.5 guard and I do have it all the way open. I'm not setting in any guideline, but I'm just trying to remove any dark spots that I could. So this is the guard between the one and the two. So this is the 1.5 guard that I threw on right now. And again, just trying to disperse any dark spots just so that taper becomes as blurry as possible. So as you see right here, this fade this taper fit is starting to come along. So right here, as I'm cutting, I'm not just trying to set in any guideline. I'm just trying to detail as much dark spots as I could. Rotating guards between the 1, 1 1.5, and the half guard. Those are going to be my main guards that I'm going to be using. Just so that we disperse those dark spots. So as you can see right here, detailing this dark spot that I set in with the two in the very beginning, just using my corner method, stretching my client's head. As you can see, it didn't take it out completely, but we're gonna go uh, back with it with the 1.5 guard. So right here, threw on my half guard, just to detail this very bottom line that I see. You always wanna eye out your, your fade, look away for about five seconds and these lines will come back to you because you're constantly looking at your head and sometimes you draw away from seeing these dark spots. So it's always important to just kind of look away for a couple seconds and then come back to uh, your fade just so that those dark spots are revealed again. So right here, through on the 1.5 guard, I am attacking my client's occipital bone. It does give that natural dark shadow. So as you saw, I was able to just stretch it out and detail those dark spots. Going back with it, using the corner method, just trying to disperse any spots. Not Again, not setting in any guideline, but just trying to disperse all those spots. Just gonna give it one more final look before we detail. As you can see, my client does have a more darker spot near his occipital bone area. So we are gonna begin to detail with the one guard all the way open. Consistently detailing your client's fade will set you apart from other people who cut hair. So again, always detailing it, putting the extra five minutes to detail your cut will separate you. This is what I learned over time. Um, so again, here's the final cut. Two on the side with the taper in the back. Appreciate you guys watching. Let's get to 100 subscribers soon. Peace out.